This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. The prosperity teaching in the church has drawn a lot of controversy since the very beginning of the church. Does the Bible bring clarity to this very confusing topic? Well, Terry Dismore is a consultant and a Christian broadcaster who shares with me his viewpoint on the subject of prosperity from his life experiences as a husband and a businessman. This is where people have trouble with prosperity, I think, is they don't think they deserve it. With the, with the prosperity doctrine or just being prosperous? Just being prosperous. Just being pro what, I, what's the definition of that? Of prosperity? Yeah. Uh, it is having more than enough. More than enough. Of what? Whatever you need. More than enough friends, more than enough time. And here's the hard part for a lot of people that are believers, more than enough money. Mm -hmm. Money is a tool. And God never said in His Word that money was the root of all evil. Yes. The, the, love of the love of money. So what are we supposed to have love for? God. Mm -hmm. That's where love comes from. Now, the love of anything can get, us, get in the way of our, of our devotion to God and our, our, our sure. following of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, family can become an idol, and so can money. Mm -hmm. And when we say, well, I don't want it because it could become an idol, now you've got a problem. Yeah, I, because I, I, God uses that through us as a conduit yeah. to, to bless other people, to go into missions, to do lots of things. The money can do, the, as you say, as a tool, can do the work, but it's got to flow through us. It's got to flow fairly, right. fairly easily and loosely. Well, yeah, that's it why he says... The, the end result can't be our desire to get the money. Right. Now, the problem with it is that we run into is in, when, uh, in Luke 6, 38, when Jesus is speaking and he said, Give, and it will be given unto you. Mm -hmm. Pressed down, down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. With the measure you use, so shall it be measured back to you. In that verse, who gives back to you? Men. Yeah, not God. And that's mm -hmm. God speaking. What did he mean? He meant that it came from other people. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't have a checkbook. He uses ours. He doesn't really need any money. No. What does he need it for? It's a tool that man has. So when we say, well, I don't want it, it's usually because we don't think we deserve it. And it's because, I believe, we have a mentality of an orphan, meaning that our father's not going to take care of us because I don't really have one. Mm -hmm. I call him my father, but he's not really my father. He's not going to supply. We believe for some reason he's not going to supply. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's experience. We don't get a check when we think we're going to get a check. There are a lot of people that give to get. Right. Now, there's a problem with that. The principle is, if you give, you will get. But if you give to get, you've got a problem yeah. because you're doing it for the wrong the reason. reason. The so, money's the motivator. Yeah. And the money's the, the, money's the target. In that case. So, so you ever been in an airplane? Several thousand miles. Now, a million mile guy. Are you really? Yeah. With who? Delta. Oh. You want some points? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, I'm a Southwest guy, <laughs> okay, so there you go. <laughs> I get the best seat in the house. I took flying lessons. For, you ever taken a flying lesson? No. All right. So one of the first things I learned in flying was this, on a fixed-wing airplane. Mm -hmm. If you get it going fast enough, it'll fly. Why? Because it's made to fly. Yes, it is. It's, that's what it's made it's gonna, for. It's going to lift. It is going to lift, and the law of lift takes off if you get it going fast enough. Mm -hmm. Now. In a jet, like a Southwest jet or a Delta jet, that's about 125 knots. If you get going 200 and it's still on the ground, there's a problem. you got a problem. Yeah. So it's the same way with money. Money is a tool, and money will work for you or against you. And if you put it in the wrong hands, and by that sure. I mean you put it in the enemy's hands, it'll work against you. The same way is if you hold on to it, if it doesn't flow through right. you, so um, there's a verse in Jeremiah, I think, chapter 2, that says, For my people have built for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that won't hold water, when I am the spring of living water. But the problem with a spring is you don't know where it comes from, and you don't know how much there is. But the cistern, you can measure what you have. Mm -hmm. So when we have a rich mentality as opposed to a wealth mentality, we can see how rich we are. But when we're wealthy, sometimes we can't see how wealthy we are. The difference between, so I tell, I, the, the insurance company that I helped start was called WealthSmart. And it died a very 
you know, like a flame throwing, Painful. multiple injuries, Crash death. And burn. Yeah, it was bad. But I learned something interesting. When I was trying to tell people about this, I wanted to bring biblical principles in. And one of the things that I said is there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. The difference between rich and poor is money. The difference between wealth and poverty is your heart. Because a par- there are, so if you think about, you know some people have got a lot of money mm-hmm. and they're terrified of losing it. So they actually have a poverty mentality. They believe in the lack of wealth, not in the lack of money. They have the money. They believe they're going to lose it. So uh, poverty is a fear of a lack of wealth. The purpose of Viewpoint is to help bring answers to some of the most common questions and some of the most perplexing questions in today's culture. Well, I'd like to encourage you, dig deeper into God's Word to develop your own viewpoint. If you don't already have a church, it's a great place to start. Find a good Bible-believing church That's the place to take your questions and get answers for your own life.